Hello and welcome to this partner webinar series. Um, today we're looking at structured learning in Teams with Firefly and Cloud Design Box. So I'd like to welcome our guest uh, Robert from Firefly. Hi Robert. Hi everyone, nice to be here. Hi Robert. Yeah, great to have you on the call. Um, and we've also got uh, from our team, we've got Joanne, the Customer Success Manager. Hi Joanne. Morning everybody. And Darren, uh, our operations manager and former MFL teacher. Hi, Darren. Good morning. So um, we're, we're all available to answer your questions as we go along. So feel free to click the question mark button in the top right, type in your questions and we'll try our best to answer them either as we go along or we'll come back to them at the end of the session. So just give you a quick um, uh, run through of the agenda today. So we're going to look at uh, both products, Cloud Design Box Solution and Firefly. Um, so we'll have a quick introduction to each of those to begin with. We'll then jump into a demo of both of them. And we'll also be talking about how they both work really well together. So Cloud Design Box creating the teams and Firefly sitting on top of that to give you that extra structured learning and some of the other features that Rob's going to show you today. And then at the end, we'll come to questions and answers. So any questions we haven't answered, we'll come back to at the end. And uh, yeah, feel free to pop those questions in the question uh, box in the top right. So I'll just start off by introducing Cloud Design Box. So we're a team of education, teams and SharePoint experts, and we support over 360 schools, um, mainly in the UK, but also internationally as well and a wide range of schools. So your independent schools, international schools, uh, primary, secondary, further education, multi-academy trusts, but we specialise in specifically in education technology. And uh, the solution we'll be looking at today, um, it's there to solve some problems that you might have. Uh, if you've already been using Teams, um, you may have come across some issues. So uh, duplicating, creating extra work for teachers, and that's something we'll both be looking at today, both Firefly and CDB. And uh, in terms of the solution that we create, we create some centralised resource areas automatically uh, from your MIS data. Um, those exist inside Teams. And the idea is that you put your resources in one place and you can reuse them with all the classes that you teach. So hopefully saving teachers time by not duplicating their workload and having multiple versions of the truth. Also about saving department leader time. So making sure that you can check on the quality of those resources by them being in that central location and also providing some analytics so that you can check that, you know, assignments have been set inside Teams, you get a good overview of how well it's being used across the entire school. And improving communication, we create a SharePoint internet where you can publish resources to wide audiences across the entire school. So whether it's you know things like policy documents or just general news and information, you've got a place to do that. And just make, try to make it as easy to use as possible. So try to make that a enjoyable experience. And the other side of uh, what we do is um, helping you get this used really well within school. So help you with that long term strategy. Um, so it might be the case that you roll this out over a academic year and um, where the first term you might use your um, on premise file shares and the second term you make them read only and the final term you switch over. It's part of that long term plan and making sure that training is put in place uh, during that period. So <clears throat> we provide some interactive uh, sessions. Uh, teachers can gain their CPD certificates and their MIE badges from Microsoft as they go through those courses and they're instructor led so they get some hands on experience using it. And uh, again, it's about saving costs and making sure that you save time as well. So in terms of the, the back end, we uh, we automate the classes and the subjects from the school MIS data so you don't have to manually set up those class teams. They're all there ready to use. I'm now going to uh, pass over to Rob, who's going to give you an introduction to Firefly. Hi, so I'm just going to uh, jump in here. So, um, so Firefly. Well, one of the key things about Firefly initially is that it's always been purpose built for schools. Uh, it was created by students, uh, two students, the initial Firefly platform, but then. Uh, we have uh, ePraise, for example, which was created by teachers and School Post, which was created by parents. And it was always created right from the start to address the, the specific issues and problems that those individuals were facing. And that's continued going forward. So our ongoing development is specifically designed to meet the needs of schools and always will be. Uh, 
partly with that, uh, one of the things that we really focus on is making sure that Firefly is really easy and intuitive to use. You don't have to be uh, an IT aficionado or a tech specialist in order to use it. Firefly wants teachers, students and parents to be able to get started really quickly uh, and to provide them with a flexible platform and a framework that helps them build on and enhance their existing structures and practices. We, as part of that, we have extensive partnerships and integrations that make sure that teachers, students and parents have all the right information and resources where they need them. And whether that's your MIS integration or whether that's integrations with Microsoft or other content providers, it means that everything is there in one place and also school leaders have the visibility that they need so that they know what to change and they, need, they, they also know when to change it so that they can help each child in their school reach their full potential. So today I'm going to be looking at a specific aspect of that, which is uh, Firefly on Teams. Uh, Firefly on Teams has two apps uh, for use uh, explicitly within Microsoft Teams. The first app here of Firefly Curriculum gives teachers the ability they can create uh, rich and engaging resources for their students, and they can do all of that within Microsoft Teams. Uh, being easy to use, so Firefly allows uh, or provides the facility to drag and drop resources into Firefly content. Uh, you can embed audio and video files. And as I said earlier, we have significant partnerships with third party tools. So things like ClickView, uh, Planet eStream, uh, various sort of online textbooks, um, all sorts of things. So you, the resources that you want to be able to use, you can add them into Teams very, very quickly. And it ensures that you can use that content quickly and easily, but reuse it again and again and again. This rich content library means that teachers and students have the resources where you need them. And as we said there, you can reuse them year on year, but also with different classes and you can share them obviously with your colleagues. So you're not entirely responsible for creating all the resources you can use. If you're in a large department, you can share that out and collaborate with each other really effectively. The adaptable structure that we mentioned earlier means also that as a teacher you have the flexible flexibility you need so that you can work within the constraints of your existing course structure. Every subject is different, every school is different, it seems that every exam board is slightly different as well and so they all have a structure that they need to be able to create or you need to be able to create in order to support successful teaching and learning and Firefly we are if we like a curriculum agnostic. Um, whatever your structure is, however you want to create it, we can accommodate that within Firefly. So that was our first app, Firefly Curriculum. Our second app, the Firefly Seating Plan, means that teachers have, it, this is about your classroom management tools and having them to hand at all times. So for example, you can create and edit your seating plans and you can share them with other teachers if, if you wish. So um, if you've got cover lessons coming up, for example, then you can share your seating plan with the relevant teachers so that they know what's going on there. And you can also have different plans for different classrooms. I used to, I was a senior leader in a school, so I got Hobson's choice and ended up teaching in multiple rooms. Um, but having a, a seating plan available for each room just removes some of the confusion from that for me. There are other tools in there as well, uh, things like the student picker uh, to allow you to pick random students. There are countdown timers and group creator tools so that you can manage your in-class activities. So in just a couple of clicks, you can set your children into randomly allocated groups. You have a timer that you can set for how long they're going to carry out the activity. The kids can see that on the screen. And so it just brings tools like that immediately to hand. And again, they're within Microsoft Teams, which is the space that lots of schools seem to be working in now. You've also got information that you need about each student. So as a teacher, I might want to know uh, pupil premium, uh, EAL or SEND or gifted and talented data. And all of that is available within the seating plan so that I can see at a glance what a particular student's challenges are or what particular support they need. And again, crucially, all of this exists within Microsoft, within the Microsoft Teams workspace. So it makes it really easy and quick for teachers to be concentrating on what it is they're trying to teach rather than trying to think, how do I manage this? What, what, what platform do I use for this? What tool do I use for that? It's all in one place. It gives your teachers a lot more time to teach and critically it gives your students a lot more ways to learn as well. So that's a quick introduction to uh, Firefly and the two Microsoft Teams apps that we have. Um, I think it's back to you for your uh, your uh, Cloud Design Box Teams demo. Thanks for that, Rob. That's uh, yeah, really good introduction and um, 
quite interested to see those features inside Teams because I know that we've got a lot of customers ourselves that use Firefly and they might not be aware of that uh, Teams integration that's available. So um, definitely we're um, excited to look at that uh, shortly. So we'll start off um, doing a quick demo of uh, Cloud Design Box and how we create those Teams for you. So I'm just going to jump into uh, a demonstration site. So we'll start off in SharePoint and then we'll move over into Teams and we'll show you how it all links together. But effectively, everything we show you today is available in both SharePoint and Teams. So if you've already embedded Teams within the school, maybe during the pandemic, um, it was uh, you know a, a steep learning curve for teachers and actually now they're quite comfortable using Teams, then that's fine. Everything we look at today is also available in Teams. So we'll start off on the school homepage and this is sort of news from around the school. Um, any news items are added in 20 team sites inside SharePoint, they get surfaced here. So it's pair size for the individual. So if I'm logged in as a student, I'm not going to see any staff news items here. And if I'm uh, if I'm enrolled on geography, I'm obviously not going to see any. Uh, I'm only going, uh, I'm going to see the geography news items rolled up here as well. And things like word of the day and assignments that pulls in from Teams, a list of all the classes that we're in. Um, but the idea is you can edit these pages and you can change them over time. You can decide what that content is for. When we open up the menu, you can see that we've got instant access. Again, this is pair size for the individual, so you can only see the teams and sites that you have access to. So if I'm logged in as a students, I'm going to see completely different items in this menu. Um, so sort of going from left to right to explain the different types of sites we create. So you've got your communication sites. So it might be something like um, your library page or it could be a staff resource area. And these areas where you can publish resources to wide audiences across the school. And you know some of the benefits of using something like SharePoint is you've got lots of tools in here that, that can help you streamline some of those business processes that you might have. So for example, this is my list of policies and I can quickly set an expiry date. I can color code it, see which ones are out of date, which ones are okay. I can even set up a quick email reminder to send me an email before those policies expire. And all those features are uh, built into SharePoint. You can just use those out of the box. And those um, communication areas, Tony, they, they really help with um, killing email, don't they? If, 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 if people are getting frustrated that their mailboxes are full and their teachers, um, by not using email so much but and, and putting news items and policies and updates inside those communication areas uh, and people just visit them on a regular basis, that really cuts down some of that frustrating email traffic. Yeah, and because this is aggregated on that home page, you don't need to go and visit every page to, you know, get the latest news updates. This is not just general news from around the school and you can keep your emails for, you know, the important targeted notifications or you might even decide to use Teams and some of the Teams groups that we look at yeah. shortly. And if, to do that. if you're working in a in a, a, a multi-academy trust context as well, that that's even more useful because you can push news across and down uh, as well. So you could publish, for example, a, um, a, a trust news item and all the teachers in all the schools would see that news item on their home page. Yeah, exactly. And um, your team sites, your collaboration teams, these are secure working areas, effectively a replacement for those staff and students shared drives that you might have in school. So when you want to move your documents into the cloud, these are sort of the areas that you might put them in. So you might have a secure area for the data team that only the, the data team can access. Um, you might have an area for the finance team that only the finance team can see and can access and these will be your secure areas and because it's all built in SharePoint and Teams you've got all those you know amazing features that come again out of the box with Microsoft where you could set things like retention policies on you know financial documents that so they kept for seven years so all that is built uh, into Teams. And if I do jump into one of these teams, you can see I just go straight into the document areas. I can go into the stuff in uh, uh, the exam analysis channel. I can work on the documents inside uh, SharePoint, um, which is great. I've got you know all the advanced document management features here, like version history. You keep up to 500 versions of every document. I could delete a document and restore it from the recycle bin. But I might also want to communicate with staff members in there. In that case, I can just switch over into the Teams view. And I can chat with other people in the data team. I can do my video calls as well as work on those documents together. So you can do it both ways, either through Teams or through SharePoint. Slightly different uh, experience, but it's all the same data.
So you, so you wouldn't have to go through, you know, the, the, the menu and come in through the SharePoint. If, you, if you've already got Teams embedded and everybody's very comfortable with the colour purple, you could just stay in Teams and actually never come into this area, but it is still the same place. And, and, and I guess you could even have one person who prefers coming in through this kind of SharePoint view because it's a bit more website-y and they could open a document there for editing and somebody else in that same team could go in through the Teams view co-author that document at exactly the same time and it would all just come together yep yeah, and uh in terms of you know document storage you know these are the places to replace some of those uh, traditional network drives that you might have where you've got stuff uh, sitting around and that's the same when it comes to the curriculum as well so you've got the class teams that we create these get created automatically from the school mis data whether you're using you know isam sims arbor bramcom we can pull that data out and we can automatically create those classes every academic year. And the typical um, experience out of the box with Microsoft School Data Sync is you get your classes created for that academic year. Maybe it's 1200 for a typical secondary school. And then at the end of that academic year, those classes are archived off and you get a new set of classes created for the new academic year. So as a teacher, you don't want to be having to upload your resources over and over again to all those different classes you teach and um, you want one place to store those resources where your department looks after them which you might have done on you know a traditional network share previously and that's where the subject areas come in so we'll again we'll automatically create the subject area for any of those subjects that exist in the school so where this is slightly different to the firefly product that we're going to look at shortly this is a document storage area so this is a place where you can uh, store those documents, a replacement for some of those shared drives that you might have had in school. Whereas the Firefly is much more about creating structured courses, um, which Rob will give you a demo of shortly. So I might have some staff resource areas here, where, which only staff can see. Again, these are just Teams channels that exist, and I can switch over into the Teams view if I want to. And then I've got some student facing resources that students can see, but they can't edit and they can only access uh, content that's appropriate for them. So they can see previous academic years, but they can't see any age inappropriate content. So for example, in this example, it's year group based, it could be course based or key stage based, depending how you teach the curriculum. And that's something that will help you uh, set up. And if I go into uh, year, year 11 as an example, it looks very familiar to you know, your OneDrive or um, SharePoint sites that you've seen before or the Teams Files tab. Um, and it's a place where you can drag and drop your folders in, your content in there, your documents. Um, and inside here, you've got all the features of SharePoint again, so I can do some uh, really good um, intelligent searching. So I can search for Of Mice and Men, you know, AQA, Q Stage 4, exam board resources and again it will drill down into those documents with the tags that I've tagged those documents with but also the content that's inside those documents and if you did want to use any of these documents inside your firefly course of uh, so so what you could do is you could actually copy a link to that document and embed it uh, in those firefly plans that we're going to look at shortly so it's got that structure you've got all your you know your images and your videos embedded um, and this is a place that stores those documents in SharePoint in the background. And going, going back to what you were saying earlier about one of the benefits being driving up quality because the heads of department can keep an eye on the document that's used. So you know that if um, you are linking to or referencing to, to that particular resource in some way, um, then uh, it's always the latest and best version of that document. So if, for example, the head of department goes back in and add some differentiated content inside that inside that resource. They had something for, for the gifted students. They, they put some extra kind of scaffolding at the start to, to, to give students who need a bit more help, some introduction. Um, as they make those changes, if you're just referencing that same centralized document, then you don't have to worry about pushing those changes out to multiple places. Yeah, and as a member of staff, you obviously you're going to be drafting those documents up and working on them. And those can go in your staff area and then maybe when you're ready to either publish it to your firefly course or just make it available in student resources you can then move those documents into that location 
So jump into the class team. So again, we create these automatically. Like I said before, you might have that rollover process that you've gone through already, um, which can be a bit painful because your classes for the teachers and the students, they sort of disappear. They're quite difficult to find once they've been archived, which go through that academic year rollover. But there is an option in here to go back to a previous academic year so I can access those archive teams uh, in read only mode um, from previous years. So there is a really quick and easy way of getting back to those teams, which um, is quite tricky to do out of the box with teams. So I'm logged in as a teacher. I can see all of the classes that I teach and I can jump into one of those classes and I can see all the students getting photos from the MIS data and jump, just jump straight into an area inside that team, inside that class team. So I can just go straight into the class team for this year 11 English set three group. And this will open up teams and go straight into uh, that particular team. So like I said before, you might have 1200 of these. And if you are considering, you know, using the parent digest email, anything like that, again, we can sync those parenting guardian details from the MIS into Microsoft and you can use that. The other thing to say about the, the classes, Tony, is, is we can make lots of different flavours of class. So it's not just your kind of timetabled classes, your, your, your basic teaching sets, but we can also take registration groups and turn those into teams and we can do rolled up stuff as well. So we can create what we call um, subject year classes. So, for example, year eight English, you'd get all the students that studied English in year eight and they'd all automatically be put into one class alongside the teachers as, a, as well. And we could do rolled up registration as well. So we could just have a class that was literally year eight or year nine or year 10 and everybody inside there um, would, would get membership of that class, you know, without teachers having to worry about managing that themselves. So um, I guess what, what Rob will be showing you later in his demo is the ability to add the tabs for those Firefly courses. And um, one of the things we do in the teams we create is automatically add a tab for those central resources that we saw earlier. So even if you're not using SharePoint, you can just come into here and access those in that central resource bank that you've got without having to um, you know, go to a different site or download and upload resources. And that's the same when you come to create your team's assignments as well. If I create a brand new assignment in here, and I go to attach a resource. Because those central resource areas are teams, it just means I can go straight into that English team, year 11 of Mice and Men, and I can just grab a worksheet uh, from there and attach it into that assignment. So again, it's just trying to save teachers time, make it really quick and easy uh, to find those resources, reuse them um, as a department. And if you do have you know, differentiated resources that you want to create for those particular groups, which I know is, is, is definitely something that um, teachers worry about when they're centralising resources, then that's absolutely fine. You can grab one of those resources, copy it into the team and differentiate it, or I could potentially put it back into the parts and have those differentiated resources available to the rest of my departments as well. That's right, because when, when you're differentiating a resource, you're trying to customise it to a particular group of students and match their needs. It's not always easy and you, you might need to kind of have a couple of goes at it before you get that document right. So take that document into the into the class team that you're working with, a particular team. But if it works out well, if that lesson really works, then you put it back into the pot so you can reuse it next year and other teachers can reuse it. Um, this year even and of course next year as well everybody gets to use that that fully differentiated resource so always put things back in the pot because uh, sharing is caring and in terms of insights you may have seen this already you get this out of the box of teams you get some insights into how well teachers use uh, how well students are engaging with teams so i can see things like and um, their well-being that you might have collected over that over that week um, I might see patterns in missed assignments and average grades. And again, I can track all of that uh, through the insights, which is really useful. Um, in terms of uh, staff engagement, one thing that we provide is our own admin panel where you can uh, quickly and easily see how well assignments are being set uh, throughout the entire school. So I want to get a quick overview of how well assignments are being set. You can see usage over time. I can group it, I can order it by uh, the concepts of a subject rather than a class. 
And if I wanted to, I could then drill down into that subject, even drill down into an individual class and just see usage over time, the names of those assignments, when they're created and when they do. So if you're a senior leader, if you're a head of department, rather than having to micromanage those class teams, because I know something we get asked quite a lot is, you know, I'm head of English, can you add me into every single English class team? And the main reasons for that is checking on the quality of resources being used, which again, you can do that if you're using centralized resources, so you don't need to do it in the individual teams, but also checking that homework's been set. That's That might just be a, a box ticking exercise. And again, you can do that centrally without having to um, go in and micromanage those individual class teams. Yeah, if, if you are, a, if you're a head of English and you know, you can potentially ask to be added to hundreds of, of, of teams, that's going to give you a very cluttered experience as, as a head of department. And you won't be able to teach your own actual classes because of all the clutter coming from the others. Whereas with this approach, you don't need to be in the class physically um, because you can see the, the quality of the work that's being set in terms of the assignments. And also, you know, they're good quality resources because you put them in those centralized places in the first place. So it's all about having quality without having to be there all the time. And uh, you may still need to go into a team, maybe to observe a lesson, um, you know, to check up. Then you can just use a cover manager to grab a teacher and a class they wouldn't normally teach. And I could inject this teacher in for one day if they're just observing a lesson, maybe 10 days if they're off self isolating or even to the end of term if I wanted to. And as soon as I click save, they get added into that class team and then automatically removed on that particular date and time. And there's other tools in here as well where you can delegate access. You can create additional teams and communication sites um, and you can do that without making somebody, you know, a full IT admin. So just to sort of quickly summarize the types of teams we create, we create the class teams uh, and there might be 1200 of those every academic year. We create the subject staff teams where staff can chat and collaborate together. And we can also create the concept of a department team as well, where you might have for example, Spanish, German, French as individual subjects, but you might need an MFL team to uh, again collaborate, do your departmental meetings. You might use it for line management and appraisal with the staff notebook. So again, that's all uh, that can all be automated for you. And that could be at an individual school or it could be across a multi academy trust. So we could get all the science teachers together across all of the schools and have a place for them to collaborate and share best practices and resources um, centrally. And just to finish off, um, where we mentioned earlier, um, that SharePoint intranet is also available as an app inside team. So you can quickly access uh, that intranet without having to retrain staff on how to open a URL, navigate, uh, you know, uh, through a browser to another site. You can that's just pull a, that's that straight That's a big in. deal, isn't it? Because it, it is one of the barriers, you know, if you build a beautiful intranet and then nobody ever gets there, uh, and you have you know members of staff and students having to type in really complex URLs. Whereas with this, you don't actually even need a browser. Teams is your browser. You just open the Teams client or you go to teams.microsoft.com and everything's there. And of course, if your intranet has all the links and web links to all the external websites and the content you want to get to, um, then you really can stay in the context of the Teams application forever. And I'm now going to pass over to Rob. He's going to give us a demo of Firefly and you can integrate into those cloud design box teams, which uh, we're very excited to see. Thanks, right? So um, yeah, a very, this will be a, a whistle stop tour run through, um, but just uh, with, I'm starting here in Teams. So you can see I'm in a standard Microsoft Teams setup and I've got my different classes on the left. Um, it all looks very familiar. If you're using Teams, I'm sure you're you're used to this. But one of the things that we were talking about the, the Firefly teams is the curriculum, Firefly curriculum and Firefly seating plan. Uh, and I've got two tabs that are set up here at the top uh, just to give you an idea of what it looks like. Uh, wait for this to jump in. Oh, it's just authenticating. There we go, and we're in. Um, so when you're presenting the resources, one of the things we talked about was this idea of having a really good structure that you can share with the students. And we can see on here, this is a Firefly resource that sits directly within Teams. I'll show you the, the site that it reads from or an example site similar to it. But what we're presenting here is I'm in the English department. I'm therefore 
have access to all of the English resources that are on here. Now I can see planning up here, which is for staff only. So one of the things to be aware of is I'm currently logged in as a teacher and therefore I have teacher permissions to the resources that are in here. If I was logging in as a student, I would only see the resources in Firefly to which I had the permission to be able to view. Um, but it means as well that as a student or as a teacher, I can navigate my way through my Firefly resources within Microsoft Teams without having to jump out of it at any point. But you'll see that what I can't do is go outside English. I'm in my English subject and therefore we're keen to try and keep you within English. So here is the English resources in total. Uh, but as a teacher, what you've done is you've pinned that first page that you want them to go to. Uh, and in this case, it was Shakespeare. And so this is the resource that they jump into as soon as they get in here. And you can see that the resources are then presented for them with with context around them. So I have the notes that I've written on here, but then I've also got maybe my YouTube video that's put in here. I've got a Quizlet uh, that sits in there as well. And I've got uh, a PDF, an old fashioned PDF. There we go, which we put in. But the kids don't have to click on it to open it. They can read it directly from within here. And of course, if you're a student, the chances are you're accessing this on your mobile phone. So the fewer clicks that you've got, actually, the easier it is to make their way. You make your way through those resources. Now, so, I Rob, showed, can, can I, I ask? Showed, um, yes, go on. With uh, if you're an existing Firefly customer and and you've spent you know time curating content just in Firefly. Is that just exactly the same content that's being used here? You don't you don't have to do it again in Teams. No, that's that that's absolutely correct. Yeah, if 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 you're using Firefly or you're using the Firefly LMS and you have this content that's set up, then actually adding it is really straightforward. Um, we talked about adding the tabs. Uh, you're going to see we have what appear to be lots of Firefly apps in here. This is because the developers have been loose on it. But I have a Firefly <laughs> curriculum one here with a little book in it, and if I click on that, what it does is because I'm logged into Microsoft, I'm automatically logged into Firefly. We have the um, single sign on with that uh, particular product. And so what it's doing is it's going to now list up in a moment um, the Firefly structure. Here it comes that the that this site takes from here. So I have all of the content that I have available to me. And what I can do is under subjects in English, uh, we're working with A level. And so we've got various pieces under Shakespeare, but if I pick uh, the historical content and just save that, and then what it does is it, I'm just going to quickly authenticate again, there it goes, um, is it adds that tab with all of the content, which is directly here from Firefly into the page itself. Now, awesome. if we're not careful, we're going to end up with masses of Firefly curriculums. Um, so I'm going to <laughs> rename this one and you can rename any of the tabs. So let's just put this called the context. I noticed as well when when you were pinning that you had a choice about what level to pin so you could either kind of pin it at you know the very top level and say this is english or you could say i'm yeah. i'm p pinning shakespeare or you could you could go down into 12th night and you could pin you could pin 12th night and i presume that means within different channels if you're creating different channels in your class team for students to have conversations about things and you know arguments about about characters and stuff um, you could put different Firefly tabs in each of those channels. Yeah, absolutely. So under English, for example, as a general stuff, but then actually under the, the language of Shakespeare, which, which might be a, a, a group that we're working here, then I have a Firefly curriculum tab. And what it will do is it will jump straight to the page that I have pinned, which in this case is obviously about Shakespeare's language, because that's where I want them to go. Um, it's the opening page. They can obviously navigate their way around within that once they've been there, but every time they come back to this tab, this is the pinned page that sits there directly for them every time. So rather than having to hunt to find resources, um, you can always signpost resources in your navigation, but actually it's just a lot quicker. If they're in Teams, this is what I, this is the page that I want them to view. This is the content that I want them to see initially, then they can jump straight into that without any messing around. And then this is all taken from, uh, and you mentioned it earlier, if you have an existing Firefly site, here it is, and you can see we have all the different resources that sit on here. And if we go into subjects and in English, for example, there's all sorts of stuff under English. So we've got our A-level um, and we've got Shakespeare and his novels and things like that. Uh, so the various novels that are in there under Shakespeare, the various different pieces that sit within here. So oops, uh, Shakespeare's language, for example, sits in there. Um, 
on actually we have one of our books that sits in there, but all sorts of bits and pieces that are in there. But if you take the content, you don't have to rebuild that content. That content can be shared directly here within uh, uh, Microsoft Teams. Of course, the other advantage with having it within your Firefly site as well is this is an area that your parents can get to very easily. So with the parent portal, parents, therefore, they can see the same resources and the same content and material that their kids are learning from. And therefore, if they want to support learning at home, and that, that was particularly relevant over the last couple of years, um, they can see the resources that the children are learning from. And you're answering some of those, those really key questions that parents have. You know, what is my child learning? How is my child doing? And is my child happy? Well, if they can see what their child is learning in the first instance, then that part of the conversation is already dealt with. Uh, the grades and so on and so forth. We deal with that within the parent portal in a slightly different setup, but it means that you're answering those two very important questions that, that they'll have. And the, as we said, you know, the structure, the organization, all of this is flexible for you to set up. The permissions as well. So we mentioned the permissions earlier on. I, I'm viewing this as a teacher, but as a student, there are things that I don't see. And actually, even the content on the page itself, anything which is not standard text, so videos, text boxes, images, diagrams, anything like that. If you only want certain children within the class to be able to see that, you can you again look at differentiation. I can have tips, I can have pointers and what have you, which permissions so that only those students that need them are able to see it. Or I might have at the bottom of the page, I might have an extension activity, again, which only my gifted and talented students are able to see. Because you know what some students are like, particularly uh, those that are, are, are very determined uh, to work through stuff, they will try and get through everything that's available to them, whether you want them to or not. Uh, so even if you put instruction, you know, this is only for group A or whoever it is, actually being able to mission it so that only that group can see it does help the kids to manage uh, their workload. It also helps you to manage the expectations as well, because again, if it's only available to those students, it's not available to other parents as well. So again, you're managing the expectation of the parents. The parents can see what their kids are supposed to be working through. Uh, and how much sort of time they're supposed to be spending on that. And so that's so the, that, the, that's, the parent view yes, matches the, the, the student view, does it, Rob? So, so if, if you are yes. a, a parent of a child and that child um, has a, 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 you might call it a constrained curriculum because they they need to focus on certain kind of core things, then the parent of that child won't see the kind of advanced and, and, and gifted areas necessarily. Yeah, it's, it's very easy to set that up. What, what, what Firefly does is when you set up your parent portal is it looks at all the curriculum groups that you have and it creates a parents of that group. So if you've right. got year nine, there'll be a parents of year nine. If you've got a year nine set to English, there'll be a parents of year nine set to English. If you've got a year nine uh, gifted and talented group, there'll be a parents of year nine gifted and talented. So you, you, you can really target and control the access to this content and it's entirely up to you what you share with the parents. So there is stuff that you may only share with students. There is stuff that you may share with both. There is stuff which is only available to parents, for example, under uh, our resources on here. There is a parent section. Um, and again, the stuff on here might be stuff that you don't need to share with students so that it sits in there. But actually, you know, societies and clubs, for example, uh, the photography club, then this is a really good way of uh, sharing the, the 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 other stuff that goes on in school. We're, we're, we're pretty good at sharing curriculum, but actually nine times out of ten, it's not the curriculum that brings the kids into school. It's all the other kind of activities that are going on. And sometimes that can be a little bit more difficult to share. So being able to share that again, the students have access to it, but you're also able to to show the parents as well. Right. If I jump back into teams, uh, the other thing we talked about was the seating plan. Um, and so I'm just going to jump into the seating plan. It's just going to log me in. There we go. And so the seating plan on here is something which I can set up. And again, it's drag and drop so that I can organize it. I can put these into groups uh, if I want to, uh, any way that I like. Um, and you can save that. You can have, um, you can shuffle them. So they now shuffle around, save that grouping if you like to, shuffle it again if you want to, and reset it. Uh, you can see here that I have data that's, uh, that I can see. So English is additional language, people premium, free school meals, uh, gifts and talent would appear as well. And, but if I want to show this on the screen, clearly I don't want the data on there. And so I just hide the data. Uh, and at this point now, when I'm picking a random student, it will go around and it will ping it up. So you can have that on the screen so they can see those sorts of things. Uh, you can allocate your groups. 
So you can choose your group size, might be groups of four, and again, it will whiz round, and now they can see by the colors what groups they're in, so they can jump directly into their groups. And then we have the, the timer, which again, you can increase uh, the number of seconds, and then that again sits on the screen, so the kids can all see that. You don't need to watch 30 seconds counting down. Uh, but that's it it's in there and then you can actually uh, you can add teachers. So if you've got LSAs, for example, that you might want to add to your plan, you can add that teacher. Uh, which means that she's now added to the group as well so that she can see what the seating plan is uh, that's going on in there as well, uh, which is really nice to do. And then there are lots of different layouts. Uh, you can have uh, grid layouts. Uh, if you actually just want to see they are, you can have a Y grid so they're spread. Uh, put them in pairs and again once you put them into pairs if you want to move them around actually I don't want that individual sat with that individual because I know they won't do any work if they're sat alongside each other then you can move them around and again of course you can save that as well um, so it's there uh, it's very much there so that you have the teams that you have all of the sort of the tools that you need sitting within teams you have the administrative tools that you need specific, specifically um, and again, if it's if it's where you're already working, then it's relatively easy to jump between uh, your team, your seating plan, or the curriculum material that you have in there, and it's all in that one single space, which is where you want it to be. Yeah, that that is the glory of Teams, isn't it? It's it's one yeah. place that you can get pretty much everything you need. Yeah, no, absolutely. And you know, we we you can see on the left here, we we we've got all sorts of teams that are set up, so not just necessarily um, the the subjects, the different subjects. These are the subjects that I see as a teacher. But actually within the staff room, for example, um, you can add uh, Firefly curriculum tabs on here, which again might be things which are much more specific to uh, the staff. So within, if I jump back in here a sec, you can see we have a staff section with all the different things that sit in there. And you can you can create those pages, those, add those tabs within Teams. So again, if the teacher is in Teams and something they need to go and see very quickly, then they can do that without having to come out of Teams and go into um, into Firefly, for example. What we're trying to do, that's spinning away, what we're trying to do is just keep, oh, I know why it's doing that. Yeah, let's try that again. Add a team, gonna add, add a tab in. There we go, Firefly curriculum. Um, what we're trying to do is make sure that, I've got that. Oh, let's try that again. No, it's not doing it. OK, so this is the Internet is playing silly. What's it for? Um, so what we're trying to do is make sure that it, I, I've always likened it to it's, it's a bit like if, if you're teaching your subject in the classroom and what you don't want to do is say, right, OK, we've all got into the classroom and now actually we need to go down to room four in order to do the introduction. So the class all troop down there. And then once you've done the introduction, now we need to come back to the lab where we're going to do the practical exercise and they all troop that there because it takes too much time and you completely lose the flow and the 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 momentum, if you like, that you've managed to generate in the lesson. And so by keeping your your, your teachers and your students in one location, then what you're able to do is you're reducing kind of the breaks in their mental processes. You're taking the hurdles yeah, out of their yeah. mental processes. Uh, which is just easier for them. I know there's there's massive research on that, isn't there? In, in terms of physical classrooms, you know, those, those transactions between, right, everybody get up, move around, move your chairs, pick your chairs up when you move your chairs, don't forget your pencil cases, yeah. down down to the lab, as you say, back from the lab doing that. Um, and, and that's difficult for, for, for every student and also for teachers to manage and very noisy. Um, and also, if you then have students with ASD, for example, that makes it more difficult for them because all those changes are very, very stressful. Um, yeah. And if you want to reduce the stress for those students, um, in this case, because because we're talking virtually, if you keep them in the same team, they don't have to reach out to those different apps and websites. They can just stay here and access everything. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that that's very much the idea behind putting putting the structure in onto the page here. What, one of the things when when you're stood in front of a class, you, you you have almost a script that you work through and you do things in a very specific order because that leads the student or guides the student through the the, the learning that that, that that you want them to to accomplish. And you be, simply because you have to scroll a web page, it does exactly the same thing so that they have your introduction. The next thing you would have done in the lesson was show them this video. Well, it's the next thing they come across. The next thing would have been a quiz potentially, and so that's the next thing they come across. And then potentially there's your roundup and your summary that sits on the end. And simply by scrolling through it, 
they have that lesson structure which is replicated for them in an online environment. So if they're coming back to consolidate, this might be exactly the same content that you use in the lesson, but now they can come back and consolidate it to help them with their homework or uh, with their revision, and it's there for them. And of course, again, what you're doing is you're removing the number of clicks. I don't have to go to YouTube and God help if you send children to YouTube because they won't come back, <laughs> but I don't have to go to YouTube. I don't yeah. have to then go into Quizlet. I then don't, I don't have to open a different document. Everything is just there presented for me. So we're removing the friction from the learning yeah. process, which hopefully will make it more successful. The, the other thing I was thinking, looking at this, obviously th this this is um, what you might call a typical class, you know, one teacher and, and, you know, roughly somewhere between 20 and 30 students, a, a normal class. And so you focus on particular content. Um, but sometimes, of course, uh, the, the teams that we make, we get these big ones, like, for example, you have year eight English or you might have, you know, year, year nine French, then you have all, all, all the, the, the year nine French students. In terms of things like lost learning, I presume this would also work as well. So say, for example, we created a, a year nine French uh, class. Um, you could come in and you could embed specific bits of content that you knew as the head of, uh, of MFL, you knew that, M, that, that year nine generally had missed these particular modules. So, you know, they didn't get to do, I don't know, pocket money or they didn't get to do world mm -hmm. of work. Most people missed that. So you could specifically paste and pin that content from Firefly. And then that's the place that the students go to do the lost learning and, and those kind of uh, bigger assignments that, that, that they know everybody in year nine needs to do. Yeah, no, and you, you're absolutely right. You, you can use it for um, for lost learning, but also obviously for students who, who are off school for, for whatever reasons. Some, yeah. some students struggle to be in school for potentially health reasons or, or well, the last two years of perfect case in point. Um, and so trying to help students catch up on lost learning is a key thing. But I think also be providing them with the facility for pre-learning. I was a big fan of the flip learning process. Yeah. Um, always felt that students didn't need me to read notes to them. And so, so giving them the opportunity to to look at what we're going to be covering before they then come into the lesson. I used to find with with the older students and the, the, the more able students, you were able to go further in the lesson than maybe you would have done previously. And um, with the students who maybe struggled, I was a physics teacher, so there's the students that struggled with that, um, those students would arrive. And if nothing else, they would recognize some of the terms that I were using. I was using so you you were you you were always slightly further ahead of the game. And so you're you're able to provide the students the ability to to feel confident coming into the lesson because they've already had a had a look at some of the content that you're going at. Uh, they can consolidate their learning further down the line. So when it comes to pop tests or end of year exams or any of those things, because again, the structure that you have put into it is there that they, they have the guidance that they need uh, to be able to, to work their way through it. And, you know, add, add your own videos in. Uh, well, we've always found that, that that's hugely popular with students. Teachers worry a bit about, oh, I'm going to look awful on the video. It's, it's going to look really sort of naff and it's not going to look at all professional. They don't care. They, 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 they love hearing their teacher's voice. Uh, they love seeing their teacher actually doing it because it's something that, that, that they can connect with. And so having the facility to, to put, put your own videos of you explaining things or experiments which go wrong in, in my subject. Um, <laughs> but again, being able to put all of that into one place. Um, it, it deals with learning at so many points, whether you know whether it's before the lesson, whether it's after the lesson, whether it's lost learning, whether it's catch up, all of those things, uh, because the structure and the organisation is there for them. That's that's about it, I think, on uh, Firefly and Teams and Firefly. Um, I don't know if you've got any other questions at this point. Um, I think that's really good, Rob. I think uh, definitely from experience, a lot of uh, schools we work with might have Firefly and literally not not be aware of those uh, uh, that integration. So when they come to us, it might be you know what what do we do with this content? Well, actually, you can just add the tab and add it into those teams really quickly and easily. Uh, you don't have to make these hyperlinks or open you know a a web browser. You can just add it as a tab. So I think that's really useful and this is a nice sort of resource we can send out to people. Um, I, I was, I was going to say, Tom, what, what, one, of the, one of the things is, you know, because everybody's leapt to Teams now, you know, which is a great thing, you know, um, it, it's brilliant that teachers have got used to using live lessons in Teams and setting that up and everything. 
Uh, but I think sometimes when a new a new tool comes up and everybody's talking about it, you start to think, oh, maybe we need to use this instead. We'll, we'll, we'll stop using that old stuff that we were doing, you know, last year, and we'll use this instead. And I don't think people realise Teams is a great integrator. It's 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 a it's a wonderful place to go to uh, collate content or access to content um, from existing sources you, you may have. So you can still be a resourceful teacher. It's just you're you're using teams to kind of frame the collaboration that's happening and frame the way that that resources are presented to students in a in a in a very kind of guided and, and, and differentiated way. Yeah, I would, I would agree. And you know, the it's it, it's it's interesting uh, watching your presentation earlier. You know, the embedding documents from SharePoint, and mm -hmm. you know, lots of people. If you think way back when, they they, they would have had all the documents they were creating ready to print uh, and give out to their classes, mm -hmm. and they they would have spent a long time creating that document or that worksheet. It's not something that they want to do again from scratch. And so, being able to take it in its either in its word doc form or its pdf form and then make that available in a different format uh, or through a different channel without having all the hassle of printing and the cost of printing actually um is something which you're 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 it, it's it reminds me of uh, i don't know if you've come across the sama model so the substitution augmentation modification and redefinition mm -hmm. process and what they're able to do is is build on the really good stuff they've had, but they're able to start to redefine how they're using it and what they're using it for. And you know that that is that ultimate goal. The the technology provides us opportunities that we couldn't have even conceived. Well, I was going to say ten years ago, even five years ago. Yeah. Um, and you know, it, you you now have opportunities to do things with stuff that you already have and do it in a completely different way and something which is far more accessible, far more engaging. Uh, and far simpler for your students and teachers. Yeah, I think the the mobile view alone, you know, that experience, whether you're consuming content now on, on a mobile phone or a small tablet, um, that, that wasn't something you could imagine. You, you could not imagine yeah. 10 years ago the possibility that, you know, in some schools, all students might have their own device or you might have bring your own device or, you know, some combination of that, or, or at least the device ratio is going up. You know, yeah. more students have access to devices more of the time. It's it's transformational if you use yeah. it. Yeah, I, I think you have to, uh, mobile for me is is the way to go because more students have access to a mobile phone than say a computer or a laptop. Yeah. Um, so, so that, that that that's simply the nature of things. And so, you know, not all students are going to have access to mobile phones, and you know, we we know that. But it, it's a higher proportion of them will, will have access to a mobile phone than, than a more expensive laptop or something like that. So I think making sure and, you know, I, I have two two daughters, two teenage daughters. I, I know that basically they have to be surgically removed from from <laughs> from their phones. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's always there. They're always using it. And so why not, you know, leverage that fact and use it as a conduit for their learning? Absolutely. And parents as well, of course. So, you know, in terms of. Yeah connecting into parent portals, been able to, to to do that from a phone as well so that, yeah, you're, you're at work, but you do spend two minutes just checking what homework's been set for your child or or what the next bit of learning that they're, they're doing is so that you can get involved in their learning as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, we have had a question come in uh, for you, Rob. Um, can I attach a Firefly resource to a team's assignment? Um, if you're that I'm not sure that you can put one directly into a Teams assignment, um, but what you can obviously do is create the link, uh, so you, you you can add a, a hyperlink into your Teams assignment, and obviously it will take them out. But obviously, if they're signed into Teams, they're already signed into Firefly, and therefore you won't have all the uh, the logging in process again. It will jump seamlessly from one to the other. Uh, and I said that. Te yeah, but Teams Thanks. assignments do do appear in the Firefly Parent Portal. So if you are setting your assignments in Teams and you want to use the Firefly Parent Portal, then the, the parents are able to see what assignments have been set for their child within uh, within Firefly. So again, it's bringing that visibility back to parents that that can sometimes be tricky with Teams. Right. Yeah, I think uh, that the parental question is something that comes up quite a lot. You know, the out of the box. Um, Weekly email digest is good, but it's not, maybe not as good as what they were using previously. But mm. yeah, actually, parents be able to log in and see that assignment live and 
the you know the the, the grades it just uh, that I think that's one of the missing gaps at the moment that uh, yeah. is, is it's definitely something people ask for. Yeah, no, very much so. So I don't think we've had any other questions then. So what I'm going to do is um, share the contact information for Firefly. So uh, the website is fireflylearning.com and you can get in contact by email. Hi at fireflylearning.com. And in terms of our contact details, so we've got the website, you can post a message there, cloudsignbox.co.uk. Our email address, info at cloudsignbox.co.uk, post any messages to us uh, through that. And you can even give us a call. Um, so Joanne's on the phone today, 01482 688 890, if you just want to have a chat. Um, and also if you've got your camera phone, if you turn on your camera, point it at those QR codes, it'll pop up with the link to our Twitter feed, lots of you know useful guides and tips that we post on a regular basis, and the newsletter. So that's just a, uh, a monthly summary of the latest uh, guides, videos, free information that we send out. So even if you don't use um, either of our products, you still might find that uh, useful. And the YouTube page again, lots of really uh, you know latest uh, guides and and videos um, on all things Microsoft Teams, and the Facebook community, which is a community for online learners. And that's somewhere we can share best practices with uh, with other teachers in that group. So uh, thank you, thank you, Rob, for joining us today. Um, that was thank really you for great. thank you for having me. It's been uh, a pleasure. And uh, thank you, Darren and uh, Joanne, for answering the questions and uh, and, and taking part. Uh, no worries. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Rob. Thanks. And uh, thank you, everyone, for attending. And uh, um, yep, yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks, everyone.